Hello, what's up? And Bwana Yesu Asifiwe, what a joy, great honor, and privilege it is to host you on today. My name is Brian Mashikadi. I'm coming to you live from Deliverance Church International, Kasarani in Zimmerman, also known as the DCIKZ. I am thrilled to be hosting you on this 27th day of September in the year of restoration and demonstration 2020. And what a joy it is yet one more time. This is the Harvest Conference 2020 for the fifth year in a row. We have seen the faithfulness of God and even right now in the times of Darona, we continue to see what God can do to our people like us. And we are not mad about it. We are so glad, so thrilled to be inviting you. So as usual, I want you to do these three things for us. Number one, there's a link to this. So please copy this link, share it with as many people as possible. Share it with your friends, your family, your colleagues, share it with your classmates. Every single young person that you know, share this link with them. Let them know that tonight is day one or night one of the Harvest Conference 2020. Also, the Focus Edition. Our appetite is so whetted for Jesus. We are so ready to receive him, man, and to the word of his grace that he has prepared for us through none other than our bishop, Dr. Jimmy Kimani. For the fifth year in a row, we are glad that we are able to be living in these times. But before then, I want to invite you to join us as we get into some wonderful time of praise and worship. Karibu sana. Praise Jesus. I want to invite us even as we start this praise session and we declare that Matendo Yake ni Ajabu. Why don't you just stand wherever you are and give him a good dance? 20. You're doing great.
because you are on our side and our hearts Christ just to praise you and lift up a thank you because of how faithful you have been regardless of how we've been how we act how what we feel Jehovah your love has been constant and we are so grateful to Ngependa Kusema Tua Shukuru because you you are so good. You are so good, Jesus. Thank you so much for your goodness, dear Lord. We are grateful. Receive every high praise in this place. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. For even from your homes, just begin to lift up a thank you to this King of Kings. How good and faithful is he. And to us, dear Father, you have given us so so much, so, so much. Even in our storms, we can see your faithfulness and we are so grateful. Hallelujah. Receive every praise. Come on, lift a praise, a praise, a praise, a praise. Many pa uhai baba na fasi nyinge na yasi kumpia Tabibu ajabu wewe Yesu Baba Baba Nashukuru Let's do that again Umenipa uhai baba Nafasi nyingine ya siku mpya
We thank you, God, for who you are and what you've been in our lives. We are so, so grateful, God. Every praise be unto you, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Time and time again, you have been faithful. And we are so, so grateful. We are so, so grateful. Coming from the comfort of your home, just lift up our thanks. Perhaps what's standing be between you and your breakthrough is your thanks. That God is faithful, that you can be grateful even here, even still, even through what you're going through. He is still good. And when you think about the things that he has done, and when you think about the power that he has shown through you and through those around you, you cannot afford to lack a thank you. We thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you. Come on, do not tire. Just lift up a thank you. 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 Oh, we lift up a thank you. We lift up a thank you. that our hearts may never lack gratitude, God, that we may always be grateful for what you have done, that you may remind us, constantly remind us, dear Father, even when we forget, because we do, because sometimes we get clouded by everything that's happening around us, that we forget your faithfulness, or that our souls may never forget how good you are, how faithful you are, dear Lord, that above all else, you have given us life, dear Father. Time and time again, you have come through for us, and you remind us that exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond what we think or imagine, you, that is what you have for us. So exceed our expectations, dear Father, even as we come before you with hearts of gratitude. Receive every high praise and every high worship. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. For this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, we want to welcome you to uh, Harvest Conference. I know some of you have already been welcomed, but if you're just joining us now, please feel welcome to this Harvest Conference 2020. And I'm so glad that again, I've been given an opportunity to start and open this conference of 2020. I want to ask you, wherever you are, if you can bow and we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the conference. We want to thank you that we start today and we pray that every speaker that will come after me will be building on the same so that at the end of this conference our life will never be the same again. So we call on your presence that God you start with us and you end with us this evening. For this we ask in Jesus name. Amen. Focus. Focus. This is the edition of Focus. And I want to read a couple of scriptures, then we will dive into the word for a couple of minutes. The book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 1 and 2, the Bible says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a, a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Wonderful 
scripture. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. In the book of uh, Numbers, we are talking about focus in the book of Numbers. And I'm looking at Numbers chapter 21. And I read one verse there. And this is a story that we are going to look into a little bit. But verse number 9 says, So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked or fixed or focused at the bronze snake, they lived. The final scripture that I want to read before we dive into the word of God is a scripture in the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John chapter number 3. And we are looking at verse number 13 uh, to verse number 15. Looking at verse number 13 to number 15. And this is what the Bible says. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven. The son of man, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness... So the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life, or who focuses on him may have eternal life. It's long since I, I looked at the dictionary, and uh, I did for this. And I found out focus as a noun has about three places that you can find it being used. Focus as a noun. Number one, focus is a center of interest or activity. So when we are saying we are going to fix our eyes, then we are saying the Lord becomes the center of everything, of our interest and our activity. And this generation has made the environment our focus of attention. So everything, it is, we want to look at what is around us and so on. But we miss the real focus, what we talk about, the center of interest of activity. The second uh, place I find noun being used is the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. In other words, his face is rather out of focus. Now, these ladies and these gentlemen that are taking over uh, our, our media here and taking uh, wonderful videos, if I'm out of focus, they will have to focus. They have to make sure that my face looks a little bit intelligent. So focus, focus. When we go to geometry, focus is one of the fixed points from which the distance is to any point or a given curve, such as an alex or parabola, are connected by a linear relation. In other words, then it becomes the fixed point. There is that point that where everything else moves from. And in linguistics, focus is an element of a sentence that is given preeminence by other means or even in international or people when they look at that sentence. Having said that, then we dive into what the Lord has laid in my heart. The Bible is full of ordinary people whom God called to his divine relay. Like he has called you, like he has called me. We have all been called into a relay. A relay for us is a place where a number of people are running the same race, but for them to win, if there are four of them, they have to keep on exchanging a baton. And as they finish, they all share together the beauty. And each one of us has been given a baton. Every one of us in the relay. Which of those people in the Bible, given those baton? Did they do what they did with their own power or resources or ways? And the answer that you can give and the answer that I can give is that none. None of the people in the Bible who ran 
ran with their own power, ran with their own resources. Uh, they didn't. They re depended on God. For example, in the book of Exodus, Moses was taught to lead his people from slavery. Then he was caught between Pharaoh's chariot and the Red Sea. That was the challenge. Are you going to focus on Pharaoh? Or are you going to focus on the Red Sea? Joshua, in the book of Joshua. Joshua was taught to go out and conquer the walled city of Jericho. Armed with nothing, only trumpets. I'm trying to qualify the fact that those that God gave them, the relay, the baton, they never used their own resources, nor did they use their power. Gideon, in the book of Judges, Gideon was told to go and defeat the massive Midianite. The army was massive. After the Lord purposefully shrunk his army from that 2,000 to 300, armed with nothing more than trumpets also, torches and empty jars. Nothing. They had nothing. All what God is asking, would you take the baton? Would you keep your focus? Gideon. Then we see Peter in the New Testament. Peter was beckoned by Jesus to get out of the boat. He did. He walked on water. Are you catching the theme? What we are talking about is our focus. Because just like this people, when we learn to focus on who God is, rather than on what we can do, then our focus, our focus will help us. Our baton will pass it on well. We see that if God is working in us, if God is working in us to do everything he has purposed to do in our lives, then you and I will rejoice in him because you know it is him that is working in us. It is him that is working in me to perfect that which concerns me and concerns the works that God has called me. Listen to this. As we learn to run the race, as we accept his buttons and submit to his training, then we can be so sure. We can say for sure, I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded. God, God is working, or if you like God's work, in and through us is always growing and increasing. You and I, what you are today, 2020, is not where we're going to be, to be 2021. Not what we were, actually, in 2019. There is some progress. We are growing. Now, let's go back to the story that I gave you. I'm talking about focus, knowing that God is the one that does what he does. If God wanted, God could have accomplished everything on his own without us. Just as he created the heavens and the earth, he could have slain Pharaoh. He could have thrown his horses into the sea. He would have done it even mid-step as they were coming. He would have melted the chariots in the blink of his eye, but he didn't. He could have brought the walls of Jericho down as Joshua and his men were sleeping so that they wake up in the morning and there are no walls of Jericho. He could have turned the massive Midianite army into a stone. So before Gideon's men blew a trumpet, they would have become stones. He could have transformed the wild waves beneath Peter's feet to become a solid rock. He could have, but he didn't. Why? Because it is you and I. It is Moses who is going to believe on that God. He's going to trust that God so that he can tell his people, stand still. And I'm, I think I'm talking to someone and the message is, stand still. Keep on focusing on God. And you're going to see the salvation that God has for us. God's goal in each of those cases was to do far more than accomplish just a task. It was to build the faith of his people. I know some of you, maybe the prayer you're praying is that you can wake up one morning and you, you are struggling, but you don't struggle anymore. Maybe you are not in the first class honors, but 
You just move into the first class honors if you're in, in the university. Something happens and you find yourself maybe you have flown out whatever desires you have heard. But God wants you to trust them so that even the money to fly to that place you want to go or the exam that you want to pass, when it has happened, you can say this is the doing of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So God's work in and through us is always growing and increasing. God's goal in each of those cases is to do much more, even into you and to my life, is to do much more than a task. A task is like I want to get healed. So once I get healed, then what? But when God comes to minister to me healing, even the process of prayer, my praying, my fasting, my waiting on God, is accomplishing more than just the healing itself. He wanted them to grow in their experience of him. He wanted his people to test his power and be transformed by his might. Now listen, it is not just to get what God has and the power that he has, but he also wants us to know and experience him and find out the power that he has. So as you continue in your focusing, as you continue in looking unto Jesus, my prayer is that God will give you the grace to keep on running the race that is set before you in the name of the Lord. Refuse to focus on what you are not. I know the biggest problem and challenge to you and to me is sometimes we want to focus on what we are not. And if you want to be frustrated, focus on what you're not. Some of us, we want to focus on what we cannot do. I don't know why. But every time you struggle, you find out you're complaining on what you're not able to do. Places that you're not able to go. The things that you concentrate on, the things that you're focusing on, are the things that you cannot do. And you know what? God wants you to do only one thing, to rely on God's power, to rely on God's resources, and to rely on God's way. So that I know whatever I do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, his power. Then I can know that God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory, his resources. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm, I'm so excited for this conference. That as we focus on what God can do, we will not focus on what we are not. But we will focus on what God says we are. We will not focus on what we cannot do. But we will focus on what God says we can do. We will not rely on our resources and our power. But we are going to rely on God. Focus on who Christ is in you. Christ in you, the hope of all glory. Focus, focus on who Christ is in you. And this is what fixing our eyes on Jesus is all about. As you carry your button, as you carry what has been released to you, Christ's unstoppable power is going to expand to you. It's going to expand you. His impact on your world is going to increase. His impact on what is around you will increase. And his transformation power or transformation in you is going to increase. What we are saying is once you have grasped this ministry, Christ in you. Going back to Moses. All what Moses said was this. Stand still. And see the salvation of God. I don't know where you find yourself. Maybe you, feel, you find like uh, the focus, you're losing focus. There are many things that are clouding you. And Moses stopped for a minute. He never looked at the Pharaoh's horses and chariots. He never looked at the Red Sea. But he looked on God and what God said he did. Standing still to see the salvation of God of God. How about Joshua? He woke up in the morning. The wall was still there. Maybe I'm speaking to someone. You wake up and even as you came to this conference, 
There are wars that are still there. You have prayed and fasted, but the wars are still there. But I'm asking, are you fixing your eyes on Jesus? Are you focused on Jesus? And what is Jesus telling you? For Joshua, he was told, go round Jericho for six days every day. And for the seventh day, go seven times. Jericho was not big. And I would imagine the people would watch them and wonder what is going on. But when Joshua obeyed the Lord, it was easy. Don't fight. Blow the trumpet. Shout. And the wall came tumbling down. That's God. And he can do it to you too. There is a wall that as you focus on Jesus, all what you'll need to do is to shout. Shout the victory that God gives. And that war will come tumbling down. How about Gideon? The story of Gideon, Eve, <laughs> is a story that is a little bit funny and interesting. Because Gideon is hiding. But an angel comes and tells him, hey, hey, you man of Allah, you strong man. In other words, when God looks at you, looks at me, he can see the potential within us. People might not even recognize. You man of Allah. And Gideon indeed kept on trying God by a fleece. But finally when he was convicted, he knew that a two th even that a 2,000 were not enough without God. And God made sure it's only 300 who are going to overcome the Midianites. May God give you that grace like he did to Gideon to trust him. To know that there is potential within you to become an overcomer. Hold the baton that has been passed to you. Knowing that you need God to help you. How about Peter? Peter would have waited. Or thought first of all. The water has to be solid for him to walk. But Peter. He is the one asking. Lord is it you? And I know there are some of you. that The situation you find yourself is like Peter. There is storm, there is water around. But Peter had courage to ask, Lord, is it you? Because Jesus is walking over all situations and circumstances for you. He wants to deliver you. But you have then, if you know him, focus on him and ask. He's the only one who asks, Jesus, is it you? The other 11 were there with him. But they were all afraid. But Peter says, Lord, is it you? If it is you then, Call me out of this turbulent boat. And Jesus said, it is I. Come. There are some of you the Lord is calling you. Yes, the circumstance is awful. But he's saying, it is I. Come. Focus on him. Focus on him. You know, the Bible tells us that at a certain time, Peter lost the focus. And he started sinking. My prayer is that none of us that will lose the focus. Because when we do, we'll start sinking and we will lose the focus. A story is also told of David. David comes up and David is a, is a lad. But he comes to fight with Goliath. But somebody says the focus of David was not actually on Goliath. The focus of David was the mighty God that Goliath was speaking against. The focus of David was God. No wonder he used only one stone. The, the, the scriptures that we read, as we bring my sharing to a close, people are beaten by snakes in the book of Numbers. And there is no medicine. It's like even our situation, we find ourselves in this world today where corona has come and they tell us there is no medicine. Eat well. Live well. So there was no medicine and Moses is wondering what are we going to do? And Moses is told, make a bronze snake and lift it up. Anyone who is bitten by the snake and they fix their eyes and focus on the bronze Snake, that will be their healing. 
There were people in Moses' time just like there are people today who refused to focus their attention on the bronze snake. They died. But those that did, they lived. If the Lord would say something to you, please would you obey because there lies your miracle. There lies my miracle. Now one day in the gospel of John where we read, then it is true then, even in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is lifted up on the cross. It is those that focus on him, on the cross dying for us, who receive their redemption and their forgiveness of sin. It's, it's that simple. In the book of Hebrews, why do we focus? Because that is critical. Why do I need to focus? Why do I need to look? The book of Hebrews says it's because we are surrounded by people. They are witnesses. They are people. And some of them are not good people. But they are there. What are they doing? Some of them intimidating us. Some of them talking about ill about our Savior. Some of them have nothing good about uh, the saving grace of our Lord. So what are they doing? But the writer of Hebrews says, no, what we are going to do, we will fix our eyes on Jesus because Jesus is the author. Because Jesus is the finisher of my faith. I'm going to focus on him. I'm going to fix my eyes on on him. I'm going to look to him. That is the desire of the writer of Hebrews. What is in your center? Remember what we said? It is the center of interest or activity. Your focus. Is Jesus the center of your interest and of your activity? If he is, you are blessed because he will be the focal point. He will be the center of your attention. He will be the cornerstone. He will be the kingpin. He will be the backbone. What is your focus? Is your focus on Jesus? If then he is, it is that state of quality of having producing clear vision, definition that the Lord will become clearer to you. We'll see him clearer. We'll see him sharper. We'll see him distinct. We'll see him. What is your focus? Focus. Is he the only fixed point where everything else and the distance that you go, it comes from his center? My prayer is that that is what God is going to do to you. So I pray this conference 2020, in the new normal, that God is going to do something to you in your focus. That the Lord will be clearer. You will carry the baton, you will not lose it. You will not lose him. You will stay focused in him. And I know that when the trumpet will sound, him, the Lord, will say to you and to me, good and faithful servant. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you allow me, I'll pray. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him that is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout a generation forever and ever. Amen. And with those words, I want to declare Harvest Conference 2020 officially 
open wherever you are. Let's celebrate the Lord. I know I cannot see you, but the Lord sees you. So let's do it one more time. Let's celebrate the doing of the Lord. Conference is open officially 2020. Let's celebrate. What a word. What a word. What a word. I sure do hope that you've been ministered to, that you've taken the challenge for yourself. Thank you so much, Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani. The Lord bless you and replenish your energy now and forever in the name of the Lord. If you've given your life to Jesus or you would like to give your life to Jesus, please reach out to that number on your screen. We are ready to walk this journey of salvation together with you. But if you've already made that decision from DCIKZ and the Harvest Conference, we want to say welcome to the family of God. I want to assure you, according to his word in the book of Colossians 1, that there is room in the house for you. All right, we've come to another session of our service. It's giving time. I invite you to catch this clip that we may know how to partner in this season. Karibu sana. <laughs>